Hey folks, how you doing? Ron Raymond here from the Raymond Report with your NHL playoffs, previews, and predictions for a Tuesday, May 18th. Hope you're having yourself a good start to your Ruby Tuesday. As always, don't forget to subscribe to our channel by tapping that notification bell in the top right-hand corner or hit the subscribe button below this video if you are using a mobile device. All right, today's podcast brought to you by HockeyPicks.com. Anybody can play, anybody can join, and you want to follow the top pickers right now at HockeyPicks.com. Z Roper, 844 points. Vela 819 and Benji from Detroit 808 points and you can follow all their playoff picks right here at hockeypicks.com. All right, good hockey game last night. In fact, we uh, we ran the board. We had a but it was an easy uh, day to run the board when all the favorites are winning, right? I did like all the favorites yesterday. We had the Carolina win, Colorado and the Boston Bruins all winner here on the Ram Report. In fact, two of the three games went over the total, and uh, we got three, uh, four games today. You know that uh, that other game today, Calgary Vancouver. It's like that. Uh, it's like an exhibition game in the way of uh, the real hockey being played right now, right? But hey, what can you do uh, in this situation uh, with the COVID situation that happened? It's uh, that's how the cookie crumbles, right? But uh, no, we got some good hockey games here tonight, and I'm gonna break down all the three games of meaning, and then I will give you a prediction on that uh, Calgary Vancouver game, but. Um, Looking at the SBI now, the Sports Betting Index, and if you're new to the RAM Report, I uh, believe in three factors of fundamentals of handicapping. Uh, factor number one, the fundamental number one, value. you got to have value in what you're betting. Number two, the percentage play. Is it in your favor? And the cycles, which we're breaking down right now, is uh, the performance cycles to see if uh, there's any indicators leading you to a solid selection. And the thing is, when you're betting playoff hockey, guys, you got to be selective and you know, every every day is not a Picasso. You can't uh, think every day. It's like buying stocks, right? You're not gonna buy uh, stocks every day because it's there. To the opportunity is there. You gotta wait, pick your spots, and then hammer the uh, the value that you see that's there. Now, looking at yesterday, again, big day for the favorites, three and zero. So nice, hundred uh, percent day for the uh, the favorites on a seven day average. Favorites in the NHL winning at fifty eight point six percent, and the over unders. 52.7% of the games have gone over the total the last seven days. All right, let's take a look at the uh, rankings tonight going into tonight's matchup. In fact, I broke down, here. here's what you know it boils down to right now. In, in Every game is almost a one-goal game. I think uh, if you look at last night's game, I know on Sunday it was all one-goal games. Last night, okay, the only one-goal game was uh, Boston-Washington. This was a three-goal game and another three-goal game right there. But you, we're, we're in the playoff hockey. And in these tight, tight matches, you're going to have to play good defensive hockey. You can't afford to get penalties. And that's what happened to the Florida Panthers. In fact, let me read this. Um, in their it was The best game of the uh, playoffs so far, right? The Tampa Bay, Florida. But with Kucherov back and, and Stamkos back, that's not a, there's your Stanley Cup team from last year, right? So Florida, hope they learned a lesson in game number one that you cannot go into that game thinking and retaliate right the, the the ref will always call the retaliators and Bennett learned and you know in hindsight we'll see what happens tonight because Bennett is suspended one game and if Florida if they just play hockey they had 50 out hit the Tampa Bay uh, Buccaneers eh? I was gonna say Buccaneers uh, Tampa Bay Lightning they out hit them 54 to 36 I think I was going there because of the hitting right football <laughs> hey we're getting close to football uh, but back to hockey 54 hits compared to 36 if Florida Panthers and, and I know Quinville a great coach he, if he just tells the guys look stay out of the box don't give Kucherov and Stamkos two minutes to to uh to put the uh, the old biscuit in the basket don't let him don't give him that opportunity play hockey physical wear them down 54 hits to 36 you just got to keep grinding them down eventually they're gonna break down right now the power the, look at the power play last game you gave the Tampa Bay um lightning Eight power plays, 16 minutes, and they converted on three of them, I think. And looking at Florida, they had nine penalties. Nine penalties for 18 minutes. Stay out of the box. Look at Dallas and look, I mean, Minnesota, Vegas. You know, Minnesota had three penalties that game for six minutes. Vegas had two. New York Islanders, three penalties. Pittsburgh had one. You don't need to be a rocket scientist. Stay out of the box, play hockey, you win hockey games. That's, you know, bottom line. So if, if um, you know, and you don't want to go in the penalty box against Tampa Bay. They're ranked ninth, averaging 22.3 uh, uh, goals per game on a power play. And they're fourth ranked PK. So, you know, they're, they're good on the PK. So special teams, play hockey. You want to beat Florida, uh, Tampa Bay on five-on-five -five hockey. And Tampa Bay, 
If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? They're doing all right. Uh, for Minnesota, same thing. You know, stay out of the box, grind them down, play hockey. Um, but, you know, the Minnesota the Wild ranked 25th in the power play. Vegas ranked 22nd. That, I found that a little uh, strange, but they're ranked number one in PK. So if they can just find a way, and hopefully Pacioretty comes back, but uh, Vegas, for sure, um, if they just play 5-on-5 five five hockey, get Pacioretty back. They, you know, you need your top guns in the playoffs, right? And Fleury, the best goaltender in the playoffs right now, in the league, 1.98 uh, goals against average. He's not the problem. you got to score goals, yeah, right? You, you lose one nothing, it's not the goalie. You, your offense got to start uh, and figure out Minnesota. Like coaches, you got to figure them out. you got to figure out line matches and start getting your best players on the you know mismatch, right? And the New York Islanders-Pittsburgh, you know, looking at the, the starting goalie, who knows who's going to be in this tonight? If it's Valarmov or Sorokin, you know, Sorokin has been good. 13 and 6 all year, 2.17 goals against, 9.18 goals against average. Valarmov, 19 and 11. A little surprising number, high number right there of uh, 11 losses. 2.04 goals against, 9.29 goals against average. Vasilevsky, Bobrovsky, you know, uh, Dreger or Dreger, uh, Dreger, Dreger, uh, <laughs> butchered his name there. I apologize for that. Uh, Dreger, uh, 14 and 6. If you're going to put Dreger in the series, it has to be tonight. You can't, if you lose tonight, you can't go to him in game three. You can't do that. You, you got, if you're going to play the, the Steve Spurrier quarterback rotation and goalie rotation, you got to go with Dreger tonight. If not, you, you, you live and die with, um, with, uh, the, uh, Bobrovsky, right? If, if Bob's your guy, you got to live with him and go right through. And then, uh, Dreger will be gone to Seattle next year, anyways. Um, Bobrovsky, 19 and 8, but Dreger, 14 and 6. 2.07 goals against, 9.27 goal save percentage, where uh, Bobrovsky, 9.06. I think Dreger is the better goaltender, but Quinville is uh, making, that's why he's making the big bucks, right? And Calgary, Vancouver, it's like uh, you're, you're in the way here, boys. Uh, you know, the, 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 you know there's a, there's a, the big boys are playing hockey right now. Um, but, you know, uh, for uh, entertainment purposes only, Calgary 22nd, Vancouver 25th, and Calgary 17 goals against average, uh, yeah, point, uh, goals against. Uh, defense and 26 for Vancouver. All right, let's take a look at some of the stats on tonight's game. Now, these stats are probably meaningless because we're in the playoff and that's a whole different series. And stats like this are more geared towards uh, the um, regular season. So, you know what? I'm not even, you know, here's one in Florida. As a home underdog, that's not bad. Last four years, and they allowed five goals against from the last game, nine and two straight up. And Tampa Bay, you know, if we're going to give one to Florida, got to give one to Tampa Bay here. Uh, as a road team, the last two years, coming off a one game win. And it was a one goal win, nine and two. So, um, hey, you know, fun facts, right? As Sheldon would say in the Big Band Theory, fun with flags. These are stats, the trends. These are fun with facts. Um, let me see here. Tampa Bay is a road favorite on a Tuesday night. Ah, there's nothing about that. I don't care about that. I don't care what day it is. Even though I do believe in the um, the, the, the bio schedule, the bio rhythms of uh, you know, the body clock. But I don't, I don't think we're at that point of stage now. These type of, of uh, trends don't mean nothing. The Golden Knights, uh, straight uh, fifteen and one, coming off a one game homestand the last two uh, two years. It'd be interesting to see what they do come off a loss. I'll check that out in a second. The under for uh, the Islanders as an away after playing Pittsburgh, so um, ten and one to the under, but they're playing Pittsburgh again. And this is why these fun facts don't mean really nothing to me uh, because it's uh, it's goal time, it's playoffs, right? All right, Vegas taking on the uh, Minnesota Wild. Now the uh, Vegas Golden Knights, a one sixty one favorite. The over under set at five and a half. Forecast gonna lean with uh, the Golden Knights here, three to two. The over under at five point eight one. Vegas six and four in the last ten. Minnesota five and five, three and seven to the uh, puck line, and seven and three to the over for Minnesota in the last ten games. Where Vegas is three and seven to the under. Now I'm just gonna look at the value here. Minus two ten for the Vegas Golden Knights compared to one forty for the uh, Minnesota Wild. So we're getting good value on both these teams. Again, the, the key to this game is Pacioretty. He has to come back. If they can stay out of the box, you got the goaltending. To me, this is a no-brainer. Vegas, you know, perception versus reality. The perception is that if you stay out of the box, you should win the game, right? You should win the game. But are they going to be taking some some penalties? And they, they got to capitalize on their uh, on their opportunities, right? They're twenty-one and eight at home. Again, I, I think tonight the play here is Vegas, but um, you just never know. Now, looking at the Vegas Golden Knights coming off a loss at home, only happened six times. Um, four and two straight up after a loss, so uh, pretty good. And on one day's rest, they are fourteen and six at home, coming off one day's rest. 
and they're seven and three versus a northeast division opponent. I do like Vegas here tonight, guys. I think you're getting good value. But this, uh, you know, I call this the Loblaws team, right? The the team with the not big names, uh, Minnesota. They're going to be a uh, their playoff team like this. It reminds me of the old New Jersey Devil days with Jacques Lemaire, right? The left wing lock or the the trap. Just you know, wait, be patient, patient, patient. Turnover score, and then sit on that one nothing lead all game. That's what Minnesota reminds me of. All right, the game of the night, Tampa Bay, Florida. Hey, I said it before, and I'll say it again. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to know what how to win this game. Stay out of the box. Keep doing what you did in game one. Keep banding, keep crashing. Get in the corners, one man in. You know, make sure you don't get caught in those long breakaway passes that killed you on the on the uh, on the point goal. But um, just keep that, but stay out of the box. Do not give Kucherov and Stamkos an opportunity on the power play because it's a, it's a thing of beauty, right? It's like three on three hockey with Chicago. You watch the Brinkett and Kane on three on three. It's like uh, you know fantasy skating on ice, right? But with, with sticks, those guys are just magic. But yeah, you don't want to be giving these guys uh, any any chances on the power play. Now the bookmakers going with Tampa Bay here, one thirty two as a favorite. The over under at five and a half, three point zero seven for Tampa to three for the Panthers. You'll run her at 6.07. We had nine goals last game. Uh, you know, again, it all depends. You stay out of the box, you win the game. Uh, you know, I <laughs> sound like a broken record, but, it, you know, even, uh, yeah, anyways, anybody can see that. 7-3 and three in their last 10 games, 6-4 and four for Tampa Bay. But the thing is, now, with Kucherov back, he's uh, he's brought a new uh, dynamic to this Tampa Bay team, and they're not the same regular season team, right? A little bit of rope-a-dope all year, and then next thing you know, Stamkos and Kucherov in your lineup. <laughs> it brings a whole different dynamic, but I do believe in the Florida Panthers. I think they do have the, um, uh, the, the, the team to win a physical battle, a seven game series, but if they can stay out of the box, um, chance of uh, this game going over the totals at 40% and for Florida at home against an eight type team, four and five straight up and seven and two to the over. And when uh, Tampa Bay is on the road against teams above 60% in the standings, three and six. So they are beatable. And uh, they're not a good road team, uh, they, as they've proven all year, but they did in game one. 16 and 13 straight up, 29 Florida Panthers at home, and uh, they're 5 and 5 in the last 10 against the Lightning. But I do like Florida again here tonight. I know I got them on the Stanley Cup, so you're probably saying, oh, he's biased because he has Florida. Yeah, maybe, maybe a bit, eh? But uh, I, I do. But now with, with Kucherov back, it, it changes the dynamic. I said it the, 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 in the first period of the game. I, I said, you know what? The winner of this series wins the Stanley Cup. That's no doubt in my mind. The winner of this series, Florida Tampa Bay, wins the Stanley Cup in my view. Now, Tampa Bay is a road team coming off a road win as a favorite. Eight and two to the over. So if you do like a total here, guys, eight and two to the over for Tampa Bay in that spot. And uh, so let me see here. Is there anything else? All right, let's go to the next game. Uh, let's go to Islanders Pittsburgh, and then I'll get to that uh, exhibition game between Calgary and Vancouver. Hey, we're in playoff mode, and then we got to talk about that game. Um, Islanders and Pittsburgh. Now the Pens of one thirty-five favorite. The over under five and a half. Now the um, the Islanders did a good job last game. They only got three penalties, but you know it was three too many, right? And when Tristan Jerry, he he can be beaten. He's um, twenty-five and nine on the year. Two point seven five goals against average. Only a nine point zero nine save against. Now who's going to be in nets between the pipes for the Islanders? Is it Sorokin? Or is it going to be Varmoff, right? So check your latest uh, listings. Seven and three Pittsburgh in the last ten. Four and six for the Islanders. And uh, looking at the value edge, minus one sixty five for the Penguins, minus one oh eight for the Islanders. And uh, I do like Pittsburgh again. I think Pittsburgh was one of the hottest teams in hockey the last say forty days, and uh, along with Florida and uh, Boston too. Boston been playing uh, good the last, but you know Boston the schedule was a cupcake schedule, right? Uh, for the Penguins at home against uh, B-type teams, five and four straight up. And when the Islanders are on the road against teams that are um, above sixty percent, one and six, and they're twelve and seventeen uh, on the on the road this season, and seven and twenty-two to the under. I think this game again goes under the total. And for the uh, the Penguins, they are ranked now. The thing is, if if the Islanders can bait Pittsburgh into some penalties, the the Penguins PK is awful. Um, the the uh, 27th ranked in the league. So the thing is, Islanders need some power plays. But again, that power play for the Islanders ranked 21st in the league, only averaging 18.8% on the power play. So um, they're going to have to find a way to get goals and get, get Pittsburgh in the box, right? They're going to have to find a way to get Pittsburgh in the box. And Calgary, Vancouver, if uh, you guys are going to play play that game, uh, looking at the uh, computer forecast, 
Flames minus 132, the favorite. The over-under at 5.5. Forecast going to go with the Flames here. 3.1 to 3.05. The over-under is set at 6.1. Calgary on the road against C-type teams. 5-6 and six straight up. 5-6 and six to the under. And for Vancouver, they are 5-3 and three straight up. 4-4 four and four to the over-under. They are 12-15 and 15 at home this year. And for the uh, Calgary Flames, in their last 10 trips to Vancouver, they are 7-3 and three straight up. So, I think Calgary uh, might be worth a look here tonight if you're going to play this game. All right, don't forget, today's podcast brought to you by HockeyPicks.com. And if you want to follow my picks each and every day, I had a pretty good night last night, 3-0 with my picks. I'm uh, look for the all Hall Olympic uh, logo. My name's uh, Ronnie Ray, and you can follow my picks each and every day right here at HockeyPicks.com. All right, there you have it. Playoff time is always a fun time, right? Uh, that's when hockey means something, and it's just... Uh, you know, when, when, when you play for something, it's just, uh, you know, like they always say, you're going to buy the seat, but you're only going to use the edge. Have a great night of hockey. As always, shop for value, play those percentages. We'll see you back shortly with another Rim Report. Cheers.